Welcome to the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast, where our goal is to help you increase your reputation as a leader, increase your ability to influence others, and increase your ability to fully engage your team to deliver remarkable results. Hi, I'm Perry Holly, a Maxwell Leadership Facilitator and Coach. And I'm Chris Cody, Executive Vice President with Maxwell Leadership. Welcome and thank you for joining. As we get started, I want to just remind you, you can visit maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. And there we have uh, the show notes yes. that uh, Perry has put together for you to kind of follow along. You'll want to do that today. Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to tie into next week's lesson as well, but you want to be able to follow along. Also, if you are interested in in, in having Maxwell Leadership come out and, and just help you with organizational culture, developing your leaders, um, a lot of what we talk about comes from Perry's experience and some of our other facilitator and coaches being in the field with organizations, and we would love to be able to help you with that in regards to training or, or coaching. You can fill out a form, and our team will be in touch with you there, so we'd love to hear from you. Well, today's topic, we're going to talk about something that is pretty relevant around this place and has been for a long time. <laughs> it's the word influence. And as I mentioned, it's part one of part two. Perry put together a uh, two-part lesson for us. It's how to become a person of influence. And ever since I've known John, that has been the definition of leadership for him. It's um, the centerpiece of everything that we do and we build off of that leadership is influence. And so it's not about your title. It's not about your tenure. It's not about how long you've been there. I was having a conversation with a guy the other day, and and he's like, hey, um, man, I used to have so much influence in my organization. I'm three weeks in here. I feel like I'm lost. And I was like, it's time to get to work. Like That's right. that's the that's the key to all of it. So um, what we're going to talk a little bit about today is how do you go about doing that? We, we talk about the power of influence. We're going to give you some handles and some tools to be able to go about doing that. The reason that it's important, you've heard us talk about, maybe you've read John's 21 Laws and and you're, you understand the law of the lid, or, or if not, I just those that are watching on YouTube, go search law of the lid and then watch John yeah, yeah. teach and, and do this. And he talks about your lid is, um, is the lid not only on your capacity, but your teams and the organization. It's the same thing with influence, and we got to grow that influence. So, Perry, super excited for us to dive into this. It's a Seems like a simple word. We talk about it a lot. Maybe oh, it becomes very common to us, but it's not. No, it's something we talk about in the five levels of leadership. We uh, talk about leadership as influence. Then I ask people, man, it's a funny word and easy to throw around. What does it mean? Mm. What does it look like? And uh, I was just doing some coaching work with someone. We were going through, John has a book called Becoming a Person of Influence. He wrote with Jim Dornan. Yeah. And I uh, found in there this um, little model that, uh, I thought we could today, I wanted to make it really practical and action oriented for anyone listening and for us. I mean, I, I use this all the time now to say, just look at the word influence. What's the acrostic there? What are each letter? And if you did each of these uh, components, mm -hmm. uh, just practice, put these into practice, you could become a person of influence. Uh, I thought before we start, maybe you could just uh, talk about the five levels because we reference that a lot. Maybe if someone is I don't know how you not know about the five. Uh, yeah. But well, I mean, here? especially as often as you write about the number five yeah, around right. here. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about this topic is, and I, I, you would agree with me, is that um, it's not really about how you become a person of influence, but how do you increase your influence? Because mm -hmm. I know that some of the executives that you facilitate team meetings for or coaching calls, like this is something that's got to stay relevant and in front of all of our leaders, no matter what level you may well, hopefully you're not turning this off if you're an executive and say this is too simple of a lesson because it's not. No, it's not. And, um, <laughs> and, and as you're working your way up in your profession, this is something that I think is key. Perry mentioned the five levels. Just quickly for us, this is the foundation of everything that we do. It's the foundation of this podcast. And simply, John developed a model, a methodology that we call the five levels of leadership. And at level one, you have influence because of your title. People follow you because they have to. At level two, you have influence because people want to follow you. They give you permission to lead them. Um, we call it the five levels of, of leadership. It's the five levels of influence, and it fits right in here. Level three, we talk about the production level. This is where people follow you because of not only what you've done for the organization, but I like to throw in there what you and your team together have done for the organization. Level four, you have level four influence with people when you have invested in them personally and professionally. 
you've developed them, mm-hmm. which is which I think is is the key to a lot of sustainable, successful organizations and cultures. And then finally, level five influence is you have done levels two, three, and four so well for so long. We call this the pinnacle level where people just have the ultimate respect for you and um, and you have made a tremendous impact or influence in their lives. So that's kind of the the five levels of leadership. And as you as we talked about, it is really about influence. And now we're going to talk about the practical ways. Okay, well, how do I go about doing that? How do I maybe even move up the levels? And it's really focusing on this. And so we have nine, nine uh, well, acrostic. Like yeah. this is a long sermon, Perry. I'm yeah, used I to three points or five points. That's why it's two lessons. <laughs> yeah. And so we broke it up into two. So we're going to talk today about the first four, and then I hope you'll join us for our next session. We'll we'll finish the five that are left there. So why don't you get All us started? Right. And this is not for you to memorize. What does the I stand for? This right. is for us to put in some actionable things we can do. And so I'll uh, I'll present the uh, what the letter and how John set that up. But I'd love for your uh, kind of real world. How do you yeah. see that? But the I in the word influence as we start off is stands for integrity, and it is really how we build relationships on trust. Mm. And you think about um, your match uh, your walk uh, matching your talk, and that uh, not only about being honest and uh, having high character, but you think about the word uh, integrated or, or integers. It, you, you are one. Mm. You are um, you, you, how you act, how you think, um, how you talk is all integrated, and it's and people can trust who you are with uh, when it about integrity. Uh, my favorite thought there is about consistency. Uh, you're a known quantity. You, you, people know what they can expect when they see you because of the high level of integrity. I love that. Yeah, when you talk about integrity with influence, I, I love the word consistency. It does compound what you do. And so integrity is really the linchpin of all mm-hmm. influence. I think if you don't have integrity, um, man, there's no chance of you increasing your influence, growing your influence, developing others. Your actions as leaders have to uh, line up with your words, and um, you don't want to ever. Have you worked with somebody that uh, you go, hmm, man? I mean, is he <laughs> or she telling me the truth? Like, what are they trying to, you know, what's the the motive here? And yeah. is there deception? Like, you you can't do that. Your words and your actions have to align, and people that you have the privilege of connecting with have to believe that you have high integrity, and you also don't want to mislead people. You don't want to look better than you are. And um, I love the word you talked about. You know, you said trust. And for us, trust is a currency to all influence. And without integrity, there can be no trust. And I know that a lot of us can say, man, I remember working for a leader where, number one, uh, they did just didn't line up yeah. to what you talked about. I didn't trust them. Felt like it was for themselves. And, and I don't think they have integrity. And so one of the things that when we talk about practical application for me in regards to this, and I really, really have to work hard at this, and I've got to get better at this, because as I look at my leadership, I go, okay, what is something that I don't do well that maybe I say I do well that could be affecting my Mm -hmm. integrity? That's the approach I took about it. You're going to be shocked when you hear this answer. (laughs) It'd be around communication (laughs) and commitment and responding to communication. Hold on. I'm falling off my chair. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. You can't. (laughs) Jake, turn his mic off. But one of the things I am trying to work towards, and again, I'm just sharing with you kind of where I'm at right now so that the integrity of my leadership stays intact is, man, I got to learn to say no, or I got to learn how to set realistic expectations on the response time. I think it does two things. One, I think it helps me um take pressure off of, man, I know that I told Perry I'd get it to him on Friday afternoon, and here it is Sunday afternoon. I'm just now even looking at it. Like That weighs heavy on me because integrity is a big part of it. So how could I have done that differently? I should have probably assessed a little bit differently on the front end and said, hey, Perry, you'll have it first thing Monday morning in your inbox, knowing that then that would give me Friday, maybe Saturday night, Sunday as I'm working on it. So the realistic expectations and then when you know, if you're if you're a people pleaser or you want to serve people, you're going to have to learn how to say no. And I think there are times mm-hmm. that all of us, we say yes to things that either, A, we don't want to do, and we're not motivated to do it, so we drag our feet to do it, um, or we just, B, we don't have time to do it, and then we don't do it, and then people are like, well, he or she told me that, 
but they never followed through. And when they start saying that, I think that's when your integrity becomes in question. Well, I appreciate your candor. It's also a two-way street as you're talking. I'm thinking it has to be at least two times in the last week you have had to ask me twice for something. And I thought, well, I knew I had it, and I knew I couldn't get to it right away. But integrity would have said I should respond and let you know. So, again, setting expectations. Not, that's good, yeah. Not after the fact that I didn't do it and I'm late or whatever, but th- that I'm going to have to – just here's the here's the straight scoop on that. Here, yeah, I, I got your mail. I understand what you want. I'm gonna have to. I'm I'm booked. I've got this, but I'll have it to you then. And I just I, my tendency is just the opposite of your. I'll I'll just yeah I'll get to it when I get to it. And I don't bother telling you. Right. And right. That, that's an integrity would require that's something good. different of me. The N in the word influence uh, stands for nurturing. And this is where you care about people as individuals. And definitely, if you want to become a person of influence, you absolutely uh, have to be known as someone who cares for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are not influenced by people that they don't feel care for them. If, you, if it's just transactional, you ask me for something, I, there's not a lot there. Uh, I use the word genuinely cares. I, yeah, I, love, that I love that because I've, I've actually worked for, for a, a leader that I knew that when he started asking me how I was, uh, he wanted something. He didn't really care, but I could. It had a pattern with it that caused me to. Uh, I felt manipulated somehow uh, when he when he began to ask that. And I love this word nurturing because uh, nurturing really takes caring mm-hmm. to the next level. You think oh, I care, but if you nurture someone, you're actually doing more than caring. You're you're actually uh, you're helping to grow them, protect them, uh, develop them. You, you're, you think about nurturing a plant. I mean, you, you feed it, you water it, you weed it, you take care of it at a different level. So uh, we don't often use that word, no, but I, I, thought like it, that. I like it a lot, thinking if you're worried about being a person of influence, do I have integrity? And so you practice the practical things you need to practice as we talk about that. But nurturing, am I doing more? Mm. I'm taking caring to the next level. Hey, podcast listeners. How would you like to be equipped with the tools to continue your personal growth and refine your strengths and weaknesses, all while being surrounded by other growth-minded leaders like yourself? You may have heard of Personal Growth Day. For our second time ever, Maxwell Leadership is hosting this one-day event on March 13th in Orlando, Florida. This event is designed to dig deeper into who you are and how you tick so that you can become the best version of yourself. If you're unable to attend Personal Growth Day in person, we also offer virtual access to the event. If you would like to participate in a -a one-of-a-kind experience and stand shoulder to shoulder with growing leaders who will sharpen your skills and equip you to create powerful, positive impact, go to maxwellleadership.com slash personalgrowthday to learn more or get your ticket. We'll see you there. What I love about the word nurturing um, is that it really encompasses the model that we have built this off of that we talked about. It's it's really the level two, three, and four mm-hmm. of the five levels of leadership, oh, that's good. Yep. which is connecting with people, helping people develop and win, and then developing them. To your point, those those things kind of fit right there. And so as you become aware of that as a leader, you go, okay, so what are the things I can be doing uh, to increase my influence around nurturing. And you mentioned a couple of them, um, but you really have got to make sure that you you really know them. Like, understand, I was talking to a, a gentleman this morning who I'm very excited to to get to know and spend more time with, and you, you're going to as well. His name is, which you didn't know that, but <laughs> now that we're communicating here and being transparent, um, <laughs> I'm going ahead and commute right now, letting you know. Um, I'll but, let you know. I'll get to that when I can. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, but we were talking, his name is was Andy, and he used to be a, a faculty member at the National War College and mm-hmm. served in the Air Force and, man, extremely sharp. Better get to that one sooner. <laughs> executive, yeah. He knows people. Yeah, you right. and I both need. That's why we're making it public right here. Okay. Like, <laughs> But it was interesting. He said, when you understand the how, how your team is wired, what their strengths and their weaknesses are, he said, it is a doorway to being able to be empathetic with them. It's a doorway to empathy. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's good. And he goes, well, sure, because not sure because it's good, meaning, but sure, this is how it works. He, he's like, you understand that not all of us 
um, are empathetic. And I was like, have you been talking to my wife? Yes, I completely understand <laughs> that not all of us have a lot of empathy. And he goes, well, what I'm finding and discovering is the better we know our team, the more empathetic I can be to them. And so that's part of that whole nurturing process. And I think the other thing is, is are you are you intentionally looking for opportunities to set them up for success, to develop them, to make sure that their future is in alignment with exactly what um, they want to be doing? I'll give you another. I'll give you another story real quick. One of our team members. Uh, we went through the assessment, the working genius. Mm -hmm. Great conversation. Yes. Get to know each other. And, and, and Pat did a fun, phenomenal job with that assessment. And so our team is going through that. Well, we have a, an anomaly in our team, which is in the category of what they call wonder. <laughs> and, and this poor team member, she's on an island when it comes to our team. And so we began to unpack this towards the end of last year. And, and I, I, I challenged her. I said, man, like that is a gift that you absolutely can bring to the team that would help us and help you. And we need to nurture that. And she's like, well, how are we going to do that? And I said, I'm, I'm going to hold you accountable to once a week, once every other week, I want you to go somewhere. We used to call it white space or thinking yeah, time. Right, right. And I want you to pick a, a question or two. And I just want you to wander on it. Right. Like, you know, no pun intended, but, and she's like, are you serious? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That would develop that. So that's an example, not, not of my leadership, it's just an example of saying, hey, get intentional about truly understanding the strengths and weaknesses so that you can be empathetic to where they are. Um, and how this led to empathy for me, as I'll wrap up here. Now I know I made it to two-part series here because you're like, Chris is not going to shut up. But how, how it worked was this. It was, I had no idea that that was a skill set of hers. The more I began to understand why it was an anomaly on my team and learn more about it, I then was able to understand some of the frustrations she has with me mm -hmm. and other yeah. systems or processes or lack of thought in some things. And so it just allowed me to kind of nurture that in there. And when you do that, leaders, when you understand that, when you go at something like that, it does nothing but increase your influence. Um, and that was all under the letter N, the <laughs> second one that we're at today. So if you want influence, <laughs> integrity, uh, nurturing, the F stands for faith. Do you believe in people? Mm. Uh, I often mm -hmm. teach, and that, uh, some people scratch their heads when I do this, but every human being has a self-concept. We, How you see yourself, your self-image, your, your self-esteem, your self-belief. And uh, I just believe that uh, how you see yourself determines, in part, how you perform your role. And I think that leaders can give a great gift to people when they believe mm. we start saying can i help demonstrate my faith in you and that how i how i see you and uh you can you can really tell when someone yeah. believes in you and they, and you will usually raise your game to not disappoint someone if you know they they think highly of you um but i wanted if you get thinking about how you demonstrate belief in the people on your team. You do this really well, but I wonder if you've captured how you, uh, how you do that. I do that. Well, I think this is such a big thing to me because I had so many people in my life and in my career, and I, I think all of us listening would, would agree with this, that you look back and there are some people that had faith and believed in you more than you believed in yourself. And it really comes across the way you speak to them in one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and, and how you speak into them. It also, uh, in written communication, goes a long way. And the other thing I think that it does and it goes a long way is when you do it in front of their peers or when you do it in front of the team. Mm -hmm. But listen, we've talked about this a couple times already. Man, we want you to be authentic about it. I'm not saying blow smoke and make up something and be so general that the team goes, huh, yeah, like that's just Chris, you know, <laughs> uh, speaking faith into Perry, even though we're trying to get rid of Perry and he keeps speaking into him, right? Um, but I also want to encourage you that we believe around here that we, it's okay for people to struggle. It's okay. It's okay for people to fail. That means that they're innovating. They're mm -hmm. trying something different there. And there's a difference between, you know, that and then just not showing up for work, right? We're not talking about that. But when that happens and you can see a little bit of discouragement in your team or in your people, that's when you really need to even speak more mm -hmm. of that positive um, and affirm them for their effort 
not just the results. And here's key. When you do it, this is one of the things that I think are so important to making sure that it's authentic. When you do it, make sure it's specific to things that you see. Meaning, let's just say uh, I was you, we were in a meeting and, and I was going about speaking my faith and my belief and uh, affirmation and you would be like, man, Perry, that podcast where you talked about influence and you built out this acrostic and whatnot, like that was awesome. And so then all of a sudden the team's like, okay, Chris is not just over here, you know, speaking belief and having faith in Perry because they like, you know, they're both level two nature right. and they like to play golf together. Like he gave us tangible reasons. Really? And so as specific, leaders yeah. give specific examples. And I think when you do that, it'll help the faith in that individual, but also the faith of the team of why you have the faith in that individual. I think it's huge because I know you and I both played football. Have you ever had a football coach? I, mm. I had coaches that I take the same mistake or lack of execution on the football field. A, a different coach could say, one coach would say it in a way that why'd you mess that up and really come down on you. And that would affect so good. the way I see myself within, I would then internalize that in a, almost a shameful way yeah. versus the coach that says, uh, Perry, you can do better. Let me show you how you might be able to do that. Then it, it actually elevates by having that belief in me. And so I believe that you believe I'm an idiot, That's then I'm going to act like an idiot. If I believe you believe I can do it, I'm going to raise my game. I, and I thought that. that belief really starts to show up. Uh, finally for today, the, uh, the L in influence. So we had integrity, we had nurturing, and we had faith. The mm. L stands for listening. <laughs> And this is, is probably it's too bad influence doesn't start with an L because this would be the, be the first, first thing one. you could That's probably right. do. But um, I doubt you can find a truly influential person right. who is not a good listener. If you're talking about you or talking about other things, you're not listening to the people on your team. It's going to be very hard for you to nurture, have faith uh, to do that. It's probably what I've determined the number one way you can show value to another person is to listen to them. So most of us think we're pretty good listeners, but I think we could all improve. What are some practical ways you found you think that we could be working on listening? Yeah, this as the world that we live in, every everyone is busy. There's a lot of chaos going on. There's a lot of noise going on. And I want to encourage us that, you know, we're all in the people business, by the way, <laughs> whether it's your family, which that's where it starts. Uh, community, your organization, there should be nothing more important than the people that we're with, period. Um, and so I think as you begin to look at, okay, well, if I'm going to invest in and be with my people, what do I need to be doing? We need to be listening mm -hmm. and listening intently. I know you talk a lot about curious and being mm -hmm. curious and yeah. the curiosity and like, are you, are you really listening to, to learn? Um, you also talk about, uh, do you want to be uh, interested or do you want to be interesting? Yes. Right. Like that's a that's a that's a a motive part thing that you need to check yourself there. One of the things that I think we could do is ask better questions. You mentioned early on as we were talking about a leader that you have worked with in the past asked you a couple questions, but you knew the only reason they were asking the questions. First of all, they're the same questions over and over again. You're like, <laughs> well, here comes Perry, and he's going to ask me, "How was my weekend? You know, what'd you do?" I, yeah. Let's mix it up a little bit, okay? <laughs> Let's make and then and then not just all you know, be interested, be curious, and then lead to something that you need. Like just be interested and curious in the people that we work with. We're not saying you've got to build deep, long term relationships with everybody you work with, but if you want to increase your influence, you better increase your ability to ask good questions. I would also to encourage you as we talk about this whole listening thing here is man, remove any distractions. In today's world, we have a lot of distractions, digital distractions, all kinds of stuff going on. And uh, I love some of these restaurants and family members that have these little baskets, right, for mm -hmm. your phones when you come. And that's the place, like I think about families and think about listening to each other and increasing your influence with each other, right? Like that's the place where stories are told and you hear things you probably would want to hear and and so, man, how do you how do you remove the distractions? And then my last thing is, no matter what is going around going on around me and the noise and the distraction, like, I really try to focus on, like, there's nothing else going on. I don't do this good all the time, but when I'm one on one and I'm with an individual, I, it's like, hey, this is the most important conversation that I'm in right now, and I don't just do that um, as a learned behavior. Well. It's become a learned behavior. I just don't do that to put on a front. Like I have found I've been able to connect better 
and, and listen and ask better questions when I do that. Mm-hmm. And so by doing that, it's increased my influence with those individuals. Yeah, so. I, think, I think about that. Be here now. It's just, Be uh, here now. Uh, That's I, I awesome. Yeah. I love that. So I, I want you to wrap it up. But just to, okay. I want to encourage our listeners, get the learner guide, get these first four. Uh, and then, again, join us next week for the remaining re- remaining five. And I think, for me, these are practical things. Mm. If you could just uh, be practicing each of these nine areas, you will develop your influence. Well, I appreciate that. I love you um, working in the number five there. Uh, remaining <laughs> five will be next week. Perry and I do want to thank you yes. for just listening um, and hopefully applying what you're learning and sharing what you're learning. We'd love for you to not only share these lessons with people in your influence, but with your team and then and then unpack them, debrief them a little bit. What'd you learn? What was the, hey, from the lesson the other day that Perry put together with the first four, what was the number one? What what do you, what's your strength? Where do you struggle the most? Let's talk about it. Just use this as a dialogue for your team. So as I wrap up and close, the I was for integrity. No doubt integrity builds relationships and it's built on trust. The N is for nurturing. Man, really care about people as individuals. Uh, people, personal first, then professional. F was for faith, where you just believe in people. The L is for listening this is really um, where you value what other people say, and that will 100% increase your influence. My last comment, and I'll say this next week as well in the next session, it's that important to us that you understand it is all about the motive behind why you're doing this. So Perry's bringing this acrostic to us, and we're working through it, and we're giving you some thoughts, and it's simple. It's hard to, it's hard to apply, but it's simple. But, man, have the right motive behind it. Um, Perry gave you a great example of uh, a leader he worked for earlier that did not have the right motive on why he was asking Perry about his weekend. And as people, you know this, they can see right through that. Mm. And so have the right motive as you're working to increase your influence. I like what John says, he, people can tell you're either motivating me or manipulating me. Yeah, it's and, so good. And we can tell. Uh, just that reminder, if you would like to have the learner guide, um, leave us a question or a comment. You can do all that at maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. We love hearing from you. We're very grateful you would spend this time with us each week. That's all today from the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast. <laughs>